Hey, yo, it's Guido coming at you with a Tactics Talk. Thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate your support. I've got a review here of the new Tier 9 1390. I say new because it was moved up from Tier 8 to Tier 9. So we'll do a review and talk about some of the things that have changed on this tank and a little bit about how it plays. We'll take a look at the tank overall. We'll take a look at the tech tree getting to the tank. We'll do a comparison with its peers at Tier 9. And then I'll give you a quick look at how I have mine set up. And after that, we'll do some gameplay, talk about how to play it. So we'll start with the overall comparison here and taking a look at it. You can see that it's a fairly small tank. It's got that crazy turret there with the auto loader. So there's not a lot of guys in that turret, hence the auto loader. You'll see that against its peers, it is a relatively small tank, low profile. So it's going to be harder to hit than even the other small light tanks. Let's go ahead and take a look at the tech tree. What's interesting about this line is as it comes up through the 38, the 40, the ELC, 12T and 1375, once you get to the Bat Chat 12T, which is another new tank, it splits into three ways there. It goes to the Bat Chat 25, the 1390 and over to the Amex 30. That's a lot of end game content. So if you want to get to three end game lines pretty quickly, highly recommend you go up this light line right here and head on in there. And once you get to that bat chat, you're going to play it a lot because you're going to unlock three tier nine tanks with that same tank. So hopefully you like it. Let's go ahead and jump into a comparison. I have added the WZ-132 Alpha in there. I do not have that tank, so we won't talk to it too much other than to look at the big numbers and the idea of it there. I have set this configuration up with no perks, no skills, and no equipment, and the crew's at 100%. So what you're seeing is what you get, none of the extra additions other than the crew showing at 100%. So here's the MX-1390 right here. Here's the rest of its peers, and you can see the numbers as we go. Interestingly, it's 240, pretty standard. A couple of them have 250. Penetration is relatively low, although it's not as bad as the WZ-132 Alpha. Rate of fire is decent. It's right in there amongst the rest of them, although it is an auto loader. So as we get down a little further, we'll talk about that. The turret traverse, pretty much the same. Light tanks, turrets move pretty good. They can circle easily and track other tanks that are circling them fairly easily. It does suffer on the gun depression, only minus 6 and plus 12, and that's suffering a little bit on the elevation. What you will watch, need to watch out for with the 1390 is lookup issues. Sometimes you may have to climb a wall or get a weird angle to shoot up, and that can be a problem on some maps on occasion. It, it will surprise you if you're not thinking about it. We get down here to the load, and that's where we start talking about the auto loader. It has four shells and 22.52 seconds with a 2.21 inner clip reload time, which is fast but not super fast. It's going to be hard for you to poke out and get all four shots off. That's about, what, almost 10 seconds, 9 seconds or so. So you do have to be careful about jumping out and thinking you're just going to clip somebody. If you are moving, that can help you out, makes you harder to hit. That being said, if you remember the old 1390 at Tier 8 had six shots and a much longer reload. What does that mean? That changes this tank considerably because with 22 seconds on the reload and a little bit more damage overall as far as each shell, that gives you a little bit more flexibility. Whereas the old 1390, you could do some pretty serious clip damage, but you had to run away and hide for quite a long time. At 22 seconds, it's more like a big derp gun. So if you pull back behind something, you're not as vulnerable for as long, even though you're only running with a four shell clip. If you look at that four shell clip and do the math, that's about, I want to say 960. Let's call it a thousand if you were slightly high on each damage roll. And you'll note that you're not able to clip out any of the other lights right here. So that is something to be very aware of. Whereas you used to be able to do that, you're not going to be able to clip out a full health tier nine scout with this tank. So that does change some of those other things about how you would run this. Aiming time is fairly long, worst in class. So the soft stats have been improved on the 90 millimeter. It's got a new kind of 90 millimeter on it. 
And the soft stats are improved, but they're still a little bit wonky and worse than the rest of the guys. But you will find those mid-range snaps and mid-range shots are going to be much more viable in this Tier 9 1390 than they used to be in the Tier 8. Works out pretty well now. Dispersion is decent. You'll see that that's okay now, so good deal. And you'll note that the DPM is worst in class, so down at 1977. And that has a lot to do with only the four shells in there and how long it takes to reload. So while it has that good burst, remember it can't clip out one of the other Tier 9 lights, and it does have overall the worst DPM, and you're trading that burst for a little bit overall poorer DPM. Hit points, you'll note it is the lowest so it's not very robust. It's much lighter. We'll get that in a minute. Just a smaller tank. Armor, you can't rely on that. The only thing it's got going for it there is the goofy angles on the turret. Can be troll. And when you do pop, if you're doing any kind of ridge running, if you can, considering the depression is kind of garbage, the turret is very small and difficult to hit. So those are a couple good things. Plus the tank overall is small and difficult to hit. Mobility-wise, there's the weight thing I talked about just a second ago. It's at 14.9 tons and you'll see that the rest of them are quite a bit higher you do not want to ram even other lights in this tank you are going to lose big time so even though it's going fast be careful about ramming you're going to lose out you'll see that the engine power is very low that's okay because the weight is low however you will note that the specific power is also lower on this tank than the rest of them other than maybe the WZ-132 Alpha, which means it takes a bit to get up to speed, even though it's about as fast as the rest of them at 64. It does take a while. So it's, it's zippy, but it does take a while to get going. Traverse speed is 41 on the whole. Lowest of all of them, 1390 and 1375 in the bat chat have always been a bit like a boat trying to turn as far as lights and mediums go. You'll just have to be careful with that. It is okay, but it's not great. So circling can be an issue if you're not careful. It finally wins at something here, and that is with the concealment. So it's got pretty good camo, being a much smaller tank. That is a good thing for it. And the view range is pretty poor at 380 if you throw on some help with skills, perks, binocs, and that kind of thing. You can push it out to the max, no problem. So that is a comparison right there obviously the difference being with this tank that it's got the auto loader and then consider the difference between the old tier 8 auto loader and the new tier 9 auto loader it does change quite a bit how this tank fights at least as far as the feel of it as you are in the middle of battle how do i have mine set up here i am i've got binox camo net and vents and you will note as with the rest of my reviews that most people will scoff that and won't go with vents or won't go with binox and camo net and that's fine what they typically will recommend is a vertical stabilizer perhaps the gun lane drive but probably vertical stabilizer vents and you can't have a gun rammer uh, optics so the typical loadout is probably vents optics and the vert stab for this tank I like to do passive it's just something I like to do so I accept the fact that I'm probably picking a lower quality setup right here with my equipment. I carry two clips of APCR, 32 regular and no HE. I see no need for HE on this tank with the 90 millimeter. I've got a small, small and automatic fire extinguisher. I run with an automatic fire extinguisher on every tank essentially other than some of the very few that rarely light on fire. So there you have it. There's an overall overview, a quick look at it compared to some of its peers and how I have it set up as well as looking at the tech tree which is interesting in that it splits out at tier 8 to three different end tier kind of ideas so it's a great line to go up in order to unlock a lot of end game content right there from here we will move into an example of gameplay with the 1390 kind of showing you how to work the auto loader Here's a gameplay example loaded into a swamp. It is a 357 game on middle tier with the 1390. And we'll go ahead and get started here. Initially, I'm going to go ahead and head out this way. I'm going to let people get by me so I can cut across. And now we're going to head up to the northeast corner up here. So the new tier 9 scouts, they do excel at getting to the forward spots. And because their guns are actually pretty good, 
they can duel to some extent with the mediums. Obviously, if they get pushed hard, they need to get out. The good news is they've got the speed to do so. And the Leopard and I will move up. Now, we're a little bit exposed. This team is camptastic down there at about the H5-6 area, which seems to be where most players want to go. But we will come up here, and I'll show you immediately that the gun handling is pretty nice on this tank. I'll just point and shoot. So it's a lot better than it used to be. And I will immediately reload right there. So I got one free shot. I don't want to go poking out there again. He's zoomed in, waiting for me to do that. That's just trading badly. He present a small target, already zoomed in, and I would be a big target. Now, if I had been reloaded right there, I might have been able to get out and take a shot on him. As it is, I'll let the leopard duel with that guy a little bit. I'm going to check our six. Why? Because we are really hanging out up here in the northeast. So I'm kind of curious if somebody's now decided to come this way. Go take a look. And they're heavily invested down the south. So it looks like most of them are down there. But here comes a bulldog, which point I'm in sniper mode having a very hard time getting a hold of this guy. So I get a shot on him. And another shot as he jumps through the air and immediately go to a reload. So something you need to do with a autoloader. Now, ideally, if I'd have seen that 4190 in game I might have shot at least one more shell down that way try to take a shot on him but I went immediately to the reload but the the thing about it is you need to time those reloads to fully clip out when you're not busy doing anything and again there's probably that a mill some other guys I could hit over there at the time I hadn't really noticed it and I want to cut up here with this leopard and let's get rid of this 251 now, I don't think he saw me coming but what happens here is he decides to bug out and our guys are tearing up the mill. I expect to see him here. He's gone, so we'll see where is this guy. There he goes. So we'll hit him. We'll crit no damage him. We'll miss, and we will crit no damage him. <laughs> so once he got low and about dead, the shields went up, and he is impervious. So I don't have to force a reload there. Obviously, I used my four shots. And now I'm just repositioning and looking for the next target without exposing myself while I'm not loaded. Now that I'm loaded, let's take a look. And it's just a series of this kind of gameplay with an auto loader, Getting your shots in, getting back safe, still advancing if you can, still looking around, but not popping out and taking bad trades where you can't even return the favor. I'm going to come across here. This is a little dangerous. I was trying to get a little further right. I hadn't realized I'd gone way up on that hill, so I'm very lucky I didn't get hit, and they had other targets to shoot at. So the 251 is running around down here now, and I know that Artie's got to be here somewhere. I'm trying to find him. Is that 251 getting behind me? No, unsure. He's going this way now. I think he's going to come around this corner. Oh, there's some Artie, but i got to deal with this guy first. So I hit him. I track him. Shields are still on. All right, fully zoom. And there's that good gun handling. I noticed, I noticed that that Artie was there, and I just shoot into the bush where he was. And I had noted him a little bit earlier. And now I'm going to try to start working on these fat kids over here. Got the 100.01 and the Scorpion. The Scorpion, I can't quite clip out, but I can maul him pretty good. I was hoping maybe someone would hit him. And I waited to reload as I came in there. I didn't go at him immediately. Fortunately, he expends his shot on something else, and I'm able to maul him a little bit. And now I'm getting out of there. What I expected him to do is push down at me, but there's enough of my friends down there that he wasn't able to do it, and in fact, they do kill him. So now I'm going to go take a look. What is this 100.1 doing? It's notice I use my camera right there. I don't poke my nose around of the tank around. I just want to see which way he's pointed. I suspected that's where he was. I also suspected he might come around this way, but he didn't. So now that I'm reloaded once again, and I wish I'd have gone to gold right here. I might have got another pin, maybe. He's put an angle on me now, so I can't quite do it. Tried to track him, but nope. So two more bits of damage, and back to the reload. So I've gone to gold now because there's a lot of heavily armored guys left. So let's go ahead and use up the gold. The 45 or the 1000.01 drops off the back and dies. I'm using this tree. It does provide some camo. I know that 4502 is there, and the 110's around in that general area as well. 
although he seems to be maybe over in those buildings. So I'm sort of trying to find where he is. There he is. Think about shooting, but no, it looks like maybe he's looking at me, and I thought I might be lit by him. You see, I'm just being careful now. No reason to go out and get dead. He's showing me the side, and you can see the gun handling is much nicer on this now. Unfortunately, he does turn his front to me, and I'm not able to take him out, but he dies to the FV after I get two or three shots on him. And now we'll run in here, and it's just clean up on aisle two. But like I said, it's a series of, with an auto loader, of getting in, getting your shots, force a reload if you don't have any good options right away so that you're always ready. And then if you use all your shells, make sure that you keep yourself covered up and safe until you reload. Now this is an example where I just accepted that I only have the three shells. I was pretty sure I wasn't going to get there to get any hit points anyway, but there was no reason to force a reload here. I'm just trying to find if I can get any kind of angle on this 100, which of course I don't. He ends up dying. So a case where I didn't want to force a reload, and the 12T is over there on the cap. So what do I think overall? I think it's pretty good. I like it better, actually, at Tier 9 than at Tier 8 with the four clip and the faster reload. For, for me, that is just a more comfortable tank to play. If you force a reload a lot with the old six shot where you're waiting 30-odd seconds or 40 or whatever the heck that was, that really took you out of the fight for a long time, especially if you forced to reload early. So it was just a little more difficult to, to work, although it ha had a little bit more punch, at least as the clip goes. So much more comfortable with 20 seconds. Pretty good gun handling overall. Suffers a little bit on the DPM front, but it has plenty of mobility for a scout. And if nothing else, going up that line to get to the 12T and split off to three endgame content lines is probably worth it. I hope this helped. If you like what you saw, make sure that you subscribe and I appreciate any support you can give. We will see you later.